circumcised, the Jews did, because that was part of their law. So the fact that he was circumcised, I don't know, you can tell me if I'm wrong, either he got circumcised after God spoke to him as an adult, or he was circumcised as a baby. Now when you have the Sunnah, and it talks about him being circumcised, and you guys then do that, that to me seems like idol worship, because you're not understanding the Sunnah isn't supposed to be about copy him and everything he done. When he kissed a black rock, you kiss a black rock. It should be, he was a righteous man. You have to live like a righteous man. That's what the Sunnah should have been about, rather than idolizing. That's why I have the issue with the whole okay, idolizing. Okay, let me summarize this for you. Yeah? We follow the commands of Allah as shown by the Prophet That's the principle, yeah? That's what we're going to be working on. That's the framework. The commands are from Allah. The showing is by the Prophet, peace be upon him. The Prophet will always be a reflection of the commands of Allah. Yeah. Let, actually, let me take that back because even that word can be misconstrued as well. So the Prophet, peace be upon him, will say exactly what's said by Allah. He does not speak of his own whim, rather he speaks of what Allah has told him. Mm. Now that doesn't seem to be somebody that... Do you know what? Let me, let me get my mic out for you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, do you have one? Yeah. You can if you want. I, I'd have to go to the camera. It's, it's up, I, I can wait for you if you no, want. No, it's not okay. that important. Okay. Thank you. you can take it from these channels if you Thank want. Thank you. Yeah. Appreciate it. So when it comes to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, do you understand Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? It just means uh, peace be upon him. Blessings upon him. Because sometimes I don't realize that even as Muslims, we say certain things and people were like, whoa, what's yeah, that? Yeah, yeah. Like when I said the Arabic thing, you were like, whoa. Because yeah, sometimes I can't, when it's online, yeah. I could go copy, paste, translate. Okay, this is what he means when he says this. But when you're trying to have a normal conversation, it's like, guys, you know I'm not Arabic. Please yeah, try that's fine. Give me a little bit of a leniency. I, I'm an I, think, idiot. I think it's probably that, that, that bias of you, because you look brown, you <laughs> seem to be. And I, you, I did have a beard before. You did. I look so nice on you. <laughs> I know, I miss it. I miss it so yeah, much. It's, it's yeah. different. Uh, it's like playing with it as well, it's like you can't do that anymore. It is, it is. And it's colder as well. That's why I'm thinking it's not the good time for you to be taking it off. No, but I had to, it is one of those things. It is what it is, it is what it is. So, Sorry, you yeah, saying? so the commands are from Allah and they're being shown by the Prophet peace be upon him. The Prophet peace be upon him, we love him, we adore him. But he was a man, he passed away, he used to eat, he used to drink. Yeah, the only one that we look up to uh, like as complete and utter perfection in every and any facet is God Allah. Okay. Yeah. So the, so, uh, Prophet Muhammad is so, so the Prophet peace be upon him, Allah made him make mistakes. Okay. Yeah, but those mistakes were corrected. For example, the Prophet peace be upon him was speaking to somebody then a blind person came in and the Prophet peace be upon him frowned at him. Mm. Allah admonished him and that admonition is mentioned in the Quran. Mm. So the Prophet peace be upon him was made to err, the correction was there so we could learn from that. Okay. There was no correct, there was no error that was kind of just left and no, because good, then, you know, do you see? I've heard some people say that uh, the Prophet was perfect and that's why I'm like I said I come to the idea that you guys idolize him in a way but if you're saying that he heard and he made yeah, mistakes. Allah made the Prophet make certain mistakes and then those mistakes were corrected yeah cool. so yeah with the Prophet peace be upon him I, I when you say idolize the Prophet that's that's interesting it might be the way maybe certain people have described it but we as Muslims to, to idolize something is to worship it, isn't it so then surely uh, our prayers would also reflect us worshipping the Prophet. You'd see maybe pictures of the Prophet, people bowing down to the Prophet, people asking the Prophet for something, saying, Oh Prophet, give us this. Oh Prophet, give us that. But we never do that. In fact, if a person asks the Prophet directly for something, that's shirk. Okay, so once again, you could probably help elaborate on this. On one of the things I've read recently, it said that um, while you're doing your prayers, you need to mention the Prophet at the beginning, the middle and the end. What's that about? Are you asking him for anything? Why is he in the prayers on your worship towards God? Why, yeah. why is he constantly there? Yeah, a very good question. So the thing why the reason why the Prophet peace be upon him is really there or he's there regularly is because like I said, the commands are from Allah and they're being shown by the Prophet peace be upon him. Yeah, so the vessel and the, the medium is the Prophet peace be upon him. So his importance is significant because if he is not there, <clears throat> then how do we get the Quran? 
then how do we get the implementation of the Quran? It is through the Prophet, but the commands are not from the Prophet, they're from Allah. No, no, but I understand that, but why is he in the beginning, the middle and the end of the prayers? Why does it, why are you worshipping the Almighty One? Yes. Why do you need to keep mentioning the person who gave you the rules from him when you're worshipping the one? Yes. That's why I'm confused. Because firstly, this is a honour that's been given to the Prophet, peace be upon him. That his name be called with the name of Allah. Because the Prophet, peace be upon him, is the chosen of the messengers. Sorry, I'm sorry, but Go isn't ahead. that associated partners with him Not then? Not necessarily. In the same breath you're saying Allah is amazing, you also have to say, and so is his Prophet Muhammad and blah blah, no, whatever no, no. you say. If you're, if, according to what you said, if we're saying Allah is amazing, we're not saying Allah is amazing and the Prophet is amazing. Allah has his own attributes. Allah is called in a certain way and the Prophet is appreciated in a certain way. Sure. For example, we'll say, um, I testify that there's none worthy of worship besides God. Now, if you worship the Prophet, then the same should be said about the Prophet. However, the testification of faith is, I testify there's none worthy of worship besides God and I testify that Muhammad is a slave and messenger of God. Okay. Do you see? Yeah, yeah, no. So they, they put together in the same declaration, but their roles are distinct and their, their importance in society or, you know, their hierarchy is made absolutely categorically so is clear. Is it similar to when Christians are praying to the Father in the name of Jesus Christ? Would that be equivalent to that? No, because, because they're not praying to him, they're saying in the name of the messenger you sent, Jesus Christ. Yeah, so that's to do with like intercession and that's like a... Intercession means... Uh, that, like a was, was, was it, intercept between you and the Lord. Oh, God. yeah. Okay, so because for them, if they only accept Jesus, that will be sufficient for them to go to paradise. Yeah, but the same thing for you guys. No, if we just accept the Prophet, but we oh, deny no, no, God... No, no, in regards to my yeah, question yeah. at the beginning was, uh, sure. if I believe in God, one God, Tawheed, if I live a righteous life, but I don't believe Prophet Muhammad was the very last ever Prophet, I don't get to heaven. Yes. I have to believe in him. Yes. So then that becomes similar to the whole Christian idea of, no, you have to believe in Jesus Christ in order to get to heaven. He so, becomes an intermediary. Not necessarily. This is a condition of faith placed by God. Yeah. So God is saying, there's none worthy of worship, like obey God, obey uh, and fo follow the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. You have the messengers there, you have the angels there, you must believe in them, you must believe in the life. So there are certain articles of faith. Those articles of faith, when you accept those, you are classified as a Muslim. If you do not accept those articles of faith, you are not a Muslim. So that's the... You can if you want, yeah. I've said that so many times. I've said that so many times. <laughs> <laughs> it matches. Oh, it does. <laughs> Remember to take it. I will. I will. So yeah, over there, when it comes to when it comes to Jesus, they actually worship Jesus. Yeah, they share the characteristics of God with Jesus. Here, they, there's a complete distinction. One is a God. One is a messenger of God. Muhammad, peace be upon him, is not is not mentioned, other than a prophet other than a messenger that's all it is yeah, we don't we're not allowed to worship him we're not allowed but but bear in mind also because based on what you said we can't be a muslim unless we follow the prophet why because the prophet is the one that's the medium for us to get that information so to take the prophet out of the equation means that you cannot now get information from no, God. So, so we'll ignore the whole day Christians believe that Jesus is God because I'm not coming into that at the moment. What I'm talking about is the fact that they say that Jesus is the shepherd to lead his sheep. So he's an intermediary. And No, she shepherd as a guide, there's no issue with somebody being a shepherd. Yeah. But to say that that person is a shepherd and now worthy of worship. No, yeah, no, no, yeah, no. Yeah. I'm not saying worship. That's why I said when sure, they sure. do their prayer, they'll pray to the Father 
in the name of the person? Not always. Nowadays, yeah. yeah. Well, the, what some people do, we can't uh, attribute. To no, the whole most thing. people believe that Jesus is God. I've met a lot of Christians who don't. No, the, but the vast majority they, yeah. they, 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 believe they that. So that's Catholicism, I think, mainly, especially because they also pray to Mary. That's that's the majority. The majority yeah. of the Christians believe Jesus is God. That individual is God. Yeah, that's, 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 but that's not the way it should be. We, we could both agree that that's not the way the Bible is written. Of course, written. It's what the, they've interpreted the, it as. So what I'm saying is, well, that's their belief. That's their theology. Yeah. That's what they're predicating their faith upon. Yeah. Whether we want it or we don't, we have to look at them and what they say and that's the claim that they make yeah but we also have to look at the book and see what it actually does say and they believe and that the book does wrong. say that he's god yeah but i'm sure you, you've had the conversation i'm pretty sure you've had conversation with christians where you've pulled out verses and you've gone well, actually over well, of here it course says. of course i don't but i'm telling you that the vast majority of christians yeah, but that's what they we, believe but if we look at the verses which correct me if i'm wrong bro yeah but the verses that they have in the book that doesn't say that that actually says that a where he says um i worship the father like you worship the father when he says things like that you use that to disprove their credit that look in your book it says this is what you should, should be doing but you're not doing it yeah so i'm saying on that basis on forget what the majority hey, we're on the are same doing page wrong. we're on the same page yeah. we, we we don't believe that jesus is god we don't believe no, no. in that sort of stuff yeah. so but the like i said the idea is that they pray to god using Jesus' name as a mediary and you guys pray to God using Muhammad's name as a mediary but here's the thing though we are not number one we're not praying to the prophet no so where are you getting this from that we're praying to the prophet well it's not praying to the prophet okay. it was more of, while you're praying to God yeah you're using, mentioning him yeah you're mentioning him so like what the, like the Christians do no but I'm just saying okay okay so here's the thing there are certain praises of God that you can say independent of the Prophet. Yeah. For example, Allahu Akbar, mm. Subhanallah, uh, Alhamdulillah. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, I'll translate these. Yeah, yeah. God so is great, I'll, Allah Akbar. Allah is the greatest, Allahu Akbar, Akbar. Yeah. Subhanallah means glory be to God, Alhamdulillah, all praise be to God. Even La ilaha illallah, in the, in the hadith it says that the supreme of dhikrs, the remembrance is La ilaha illallah. Okay. Yeah, which is there's none worthy worship besides Allah. Yeah, yeah. So there's many remembrances of God that his name is there by himself. Mm. Even every chapter of the Quran starts with in the name of God, the most kind, the most merciful. Mm. There's no mention of the Prophet Muhammad there. No, Peace no, be upon him. Do you see? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we don't, it's not always the case that whenever Allah is mentioned, the Prophet is always mentioned. Yeah. However, the honor is given to the Prophet that his name is mentioned alongside the name of Oh, is it? Yeah. Should we just move a bit this way? You see, you man is standing in an awkward position, man. Yeah, sure. So you're facing the sun as well. Just face that way. Yeah, to here. To here. Not that. Yeah. There, there, there. Okay. There, there. Just face, face. Should we come here? No, no. If you go there, you is... Yeah, yeah. Should there. we go over there? Should we move? No, no, no. Go there. It's because we are filming towards the Bro. sun, it looks yeah. too bright. Okay, just yeah, no, face no, away yeah. from the sun, yeah, and yeah. then we can just face the camera as I can go. Uh, are you sure you want to carry on with me, or you want to... We can if you, you want. It's up to you, bro. I'm easy. Yeah. I'm easy. I'm just, you actually do a lot of different interviews and you probably had plans. We will, but I, I didn't want to leave you high and dry as well, isn't oh, it? No, no, no. I, I got my answer. I was happy. Uh, fine, I see yeah. you. You're good. Okay, alhamdulillah. So, alhamdulillah. So, so yeah, bro, I mean, uh, this question is important for me to understand because yeah, bro, it, this this notion that it, to be honest, it, again, it's in the sun again. No, it's good. Oh, for us. It's good, it's good, it's good yeah. Yeah, because okay. we were probably in the dark because we were facing that way. All right, cool, cool. <laughs> so <laughs> messy enough. Alhamdulillah. <laughs> so yeah, bro, like we we don't we don't worship the the prophet peace be upon him. I can understand, and I'm glad that you're kind of holding it under scrutiny because. Stuff like this should be held under scrutiny because even in Islam as well, the wahda near the oneness of God is a very important and integral principle. 100%. And that's why you're, you're kind of demonstrating that I'm glad you're holding it to scrutiny because if we claim that it is, and that's the reason why a person can be eternally damned and the likes, then surely it should be held up to scrutiny. So, mm, no, yeah, no, no, so the, true, because it's, it gives a better understanding, it, it, not just for myself, but yeah. for the other people who are Muslim who probably didn't have this question in their head. Yes. It, it answers lots of questions for different people. So, this is why I'm like. So, sorry, going back to what we were just saying. So, Jesus is the prophet. I'll, I'll also give you another example as prophet. well, yeah? 
So the Prophet, peace be upon him, his uncle Abu Talib didn't accept Islam. Okay. Yeah. Now, if he was somebody to be idolized, like he's this guy is perfect in every aspect and this, so not guy, I mean, the Prophet, peace be upon him, as a prophet, then his uncle didn't accept Islam. His son passed away when he was six. You know, his um, you know wife passed away and, you know, the likes. So, so the thing is that perfection, complete perfection is only for God. 100%. Prophet peace be upon him came as a practical way for us to live life. In fact, Aisha, his wife says, to the nearest meaning, that he was a practical implementation of the Quran. Mm. A, a, a good analogy that I give is like, you know when you have to assemble like an Ikea cupboard or shelf? Yeah, yeah. Those pictures, bro. <laughs> They're not that complicated, are they? Sometimes, bro, they can be really tricky. So having someone there, if a guy that knew what he was doing okay, was there yeah. and saying, you know what, pick that screwdriver no, there. No, no, for sure. Some people are read, uh, read and learn. Some people have to see it physically to understand it and learn. You know so what I mean? I, I, I completely understand that. And I think that it's a good thing to have a prophet with the book to say, Brother, bring, bring the mic back down a bit. Yeah? This one? Yeah, bring it down, bring it a bit more down, further down. This? Yeah. Okay. Hey, yeah? Uh, they clash, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got you, I got you. So, yeah, bro. Yeah. So, yeah. No, I completely understand that. They, you need the prophet there to kind of show the way for what the book actually says and how to live your life. But that, the point I make is just simply that, once again, for me, the big issue is saying that he's the last prophet ever. Yeah. I've, I, I've recently found out there's like seven Aruf. Is that the. Aruf, yeah. Aruf. So, see, I'm, I'm becoming Arabic without even knowing it. I've learned so much. Um, the seven Aruf. Yeah. So, I don't know if this is true, but I think possibly in one of those Aruf, it may have been worded slightly different. Instead of saying that he's the last prophet ever, it could have been he's the last prophet for Islam, like I believe. The, the two the two qira'ahs that we have of that particular verse, both of them say the same thing. What's a qira'ah? Qira'ah is what's derived from the Ahruf. But there's seven different ways, seven Ahruf. Mm. And I was told that um, you don't have, so the uh, Qur'ans nowadays, they're only in one Ahruf, right? Mm, so the Qur'an, that yeah, that, that's the Hafs qira'ah. That's, it depends, yeah, the Hafs qira'ah is, is the main dialect. one. The, uh, no, so this is a complete. Like, if you really want to get into this, yeah, yeah, you, this you, is, uh, your brain's gonna get frazzled. Uh, give it to me. Okay. So there's you've got ahruf. <clears throat> they say there's at least seven ahruf. Yeah. Now, when it comes to the ahruf, there were certain words that the Prophet peace be upon him, um, via revelation, yeah, Allah allowed that the Prophet allowed certain words to be read in different ways yeah, for, no, for for certain individuals. That allowance is called Ahruf. Mm. Yeah, that's all it is. So there were certain allowances that were made. Mm. Yeah, and then afterwards, now let's just say one word. You've got Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. That's a lot of words. Yeah, Ar Rahman Ar Rahim. <laughs> then, you, then you've got Maliki Yomiddin. Then you've got Maliki Yomiddin. Yeah, so these are two ways that you can recite it Maliki Yomiddin or Maliki Yomiddin. Mm. Yeah, so and then as it goes, they mean literally the same thing. It's okay. pretty much the same thing. See, that's, that's, the, that's why I'm a bit confused with the pretty much because, like I said, I believe yeah, when that I say one pretty much, no, 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 I, been that. when I say pretty much, I'm, I'm just being academically honest in the sense that the translation is not completely different. For example, uh, master of the day of judgment or king of the day of judgment. Mm. That's that's the extent that it will be. Yeah. So you've got the the, the subject matter, the aqidah does not change. There is absolute unanimity in this. There's no sect that will say otherwise. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That the ahruf do not change aqidah, do not change belief. And here, with regards to finality of the prophet, that's aqidah, which is called belief. Fundamental beliefs has much more rigor. Rig, um, rigor in Islam than say uh, a, another field does mm. because this is the most important thing in Islam. So yeah, there's no belief. way that. So there's my the, theory is yeah. that one of the. Others, but that's what I'm saying that 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 sentence that is because it would have been true. Yeah. The, the, the other way, so the way is that he's the last prophet for. How do you, how so, do you say? So and Khatim. 
an nabiyin yeah What's mean? so these are the two qiras yeah seal of the prophets and what was the other one final. and final prophets okay. yeah so both of them you can see seal and final both in terms of the aqeedah both in terms of the belief mean exactly the same thing however in terms of the way they're pronounced for certain people it, it caters for different people that can't say khatam an nabiyin so, so they so would say khatim so what's the translation of the seal one so seal according to the mufassirin according to the dictionaries all of them imply the end final no, nothing afterwards the only reason kaput, I, kapish. I, I want a bit more explanation on that because like solomon had the seal or something like that according to jews i think he had a seal yeah so that's why i'm like okay so how can you say that yeah he solomon had a seal and then muhammad has a seal and then there's a difference between a person having a seal and a person being a seal okay yeah seal being the seal means you're the end having a seal mean that okay what is that seal is that in the form of a ring is that form of you know you know st stamping something or doing something or is it on his staff so that's that seal so his seal was not in terms of prophethood no, nor did he claim nor did his scripture claim that he was the seal of the prophets so seal of the prophets so wouldn't uh, so categorically means the end wouldn't this translation sim be similar in the sense that Muhammad was the seal of the prophets like a stamp like the ring or whatever why is it that it has to be the last prophet ever like a seal on a lid why is it that and not the other yeah because if you look at the way the arabic is structured there's a difference between somebody sealing something yeah and a person being a seal one's a noun and one is a verb yeah so was he a seal or was he sealing yeah so the prophet is the seal of the prophet so he's the verb it's the no the verb is the doing thing that you're referring yeah, to the other one? yeah the other one that's the noun noun yeah so yeah he's the noun so he's not actually verb as he's not sealing prophethood he's the noun yeah the prophet can't do the sealing only allah can do the sealing yeah, but you said that he was the seal and, and when we look at seal and when we look at verses of the Quran, number one, we look at its apparent meaning. And number two, when we're unsure about that, we look at other verses of the Quran. We look at verse, then we look at our hadith as well in commentary. Yeah, but I don't like our hadith because uh, no, I'd rather focus on the Quran. If the Quran is the perfect word of God, I'd rather trust that than witness statements. Because that's why we don't, well, I'm guessing that's why you don't believe the Bible. Because the Bible is just witness statements of Jesus Christ. The Bible is unsubstantiated witness statements. Regardless, they're still not witness necessarily statements. because the hadith are substantiated witness statements. Yeah, but not all of them could be 100%. This is why you have to have the different grading levels. Yes. So you you understand yourself that even though that they're witness statements, they're not going to be 100% accurate. There will only be a certain level of accuracy to it. So this is why I personally prefer to go stick to the Quran. If if we are claiming Quran is perfect. And it, this is the word of God. Let's stick to what the Quran says rather than adding, oh, this person in this hadith said this, if that's okay. Yeah, no, that, that's fine. We can stick by that. But let me tell you the principles yeah, yeah. within Islam, which is that when we derive laws, we derive it from Quran, Sunnah, Ijma, and Qiyas. Ijma and Qiyas. Yeah, so those. Quran, then you've got Sunnah. Yeah, no Sunnah. Yeah, Ijma. then Ijma, which is consensus. Okay. Consensus of the companions, consensus of the scholars, yeah. and then you've got analogical deduction as well. Logical deduction. Yeah, okay. analogies. Yeah. Uh, analogical deduction. Sorry, not analogies. So, so these are four principles. So, uh, hadith comes number two. Yeah. Now, how we get hadith and the grading of hadith, etc., etc., that is an integral part of Islam. Like the Quran will give you principles, it will not elaborate on those principles. Yeah, but for example, the Quran will say, it, I'm sorry, but you can't say it's integral when the Quran doesn't specify the hadith. The Quran says, Yeah, you got to follow the life of the Prophet, which is the Sunnah, which I understand, but it doesn't say the Sunnah and the hadith because the hadith was obviously come around afterwards when people were like, Oh, what does this mean? What does that mean? when they were asking the prophet's companions but that's, that's why we had the discussion that's why we had the discussion earlier isn't it Which one? um of 
testifying Allah and testifying about the Prophet peace be upon him as well. And because the Prophet peace be upon him, Walaikum Salam. Because the Prophet peace be upon him is the medium. He is the one that's showing us his words are very important and they do need to be meticulously preserved. However, if somebody argues, okay, this or that, yes, they are being preserved by man. And yes, there are opinions, but to disregard all of hadith, that's false as well. Because the grading of hadith, there's ijma. Like when it comes to Imam Bukhari, his sahih, that's the third principle that I said, Quran, Sunnah, ijma. Ijma has been done that after the Quran, yeah, yeah, that consensus has been done that after the Quran, Bukhari is the most authentic book. After that, you've got a Muslim. Then you've got Ibn Majah. No, I understand yeah, that, but if you look at the modern so, world today, yeah. if we were to go by consensus on the majority of people, they'll say that Israel has a right to do what they're doing. We have to understand at some point, some people can be brainwashed, some people do have uh, no thinking skills or whatever. So we have to try and look at, this is why personally I prefer to stick to the Quran itself because if that's the word of God, there is no if, but, or maybe, that's what, that's what the Quran says. This is why like, I don't, I understand consensus is important, but you have to also understand that consensus can be manipulated. Like I said, if we look but, at but in order, today, But in order for somebody to say that consensus is manipulated, you need to bring something credible. I don't need to. Well, that's what I'm saying. Well, I'm not. I'm I'll give you an example. Manipulate. I'm saying. I understand. We test it. Let me just answer your point. looking back at the Quran, what does the Quran actually say? I don't want to talk about what this person said or what that person said. Let's talk about what the Quran says, because then that way, we don't need to worry about consensus. We talk about what is factually in the Quran. Yeah. You understand? We we can stick to the Quran. Yeah. That's no problem, but I remember I said that I'm giving you our general position as well. Okay. So yeah, so our general position encompasses the fact that you you do have authentic hadith, you do have mutawatir hadith, mass reported hadith, which is akin to the Quran that has mass reported chains as well. So mass reported chains are of the highest value. To, now to say that stuff can be manipulated, etc., etc., there has to be evidence for that. Now Israel. The thing with the Israel thing that, that you've raised, it's very clear. There is evidence for that. You can say there's lobby groups, there's clear hypocrisies that can be seen. There can be, you know, contradictory statements. So, of course, of course. But what I'm saying most is, most of the people in the world won't be saying that. But what I'm saying is that pertaining the chains of narrations, it takes all of what you've said into consideration. Yeah, it, the name, family, tribe of the person, the honesty, where they studied you know, who they studied with, where they were and all that sort of stuff. Were they accepted in their community? You know, were they reliable? What did they say? Did somebody else verify that? So the hadith process, I don't want it to be kind of misconstrued or yeah, even compared, compared to say the Bible or compared to say other sayings. Because let me tell you something. When it comes to the hadith literature, there's no other religion that has something similar to the isnad and the hadith science that the Muslims do. I have no idea about that. You could be right, but uh, it, look, look into to that. To me, it's not, it's not important because if we've got the book it's not, of truth. Listen, listen, listen. It's not, li listen, listen, listen. The reason why it's not important is because, like you said, you don't know. And because it's been recorded and you can check it afterwards, maybe it's something you can research into and then you might think differently. That's all I'm well, saying. The reason I say that yeah. is, once again, so if we were to look at the Israel-Palestine conflict again, I don't want to keep bringing it up, but unfortunately it's the most relevant example I can think of. Yeah, yeah. If you had Israelis who had all given witness statements, and those witness statements were then verified by other Israelis, and those Israelis were then verified by other Israelis, at some point you're going to go, yeah, they're sticking up for each other. It's not that it's 100% true, it's yeah. that that's the narrative that they want to push. Yeah. So this is why I understand where you're coming from, but when all these uh, lineages of authentication are all Arabic and they're all around the same time and all around the same people, I can't just go, yeah, 100% I believe that. I have to look at the truth, which is, according to you guys, the Quran. That's why I always stick with the Quran only. I, I appreciate what you're saying, I appreciate why you guys do what you do, but personally, as a non-Arabic, non-Muslim, I have to understand that I'd rather focus on the Quran itself and what it says. This is why when you said the whole seal thing, being a noun and a verb, 
A noun. That was an example. No, no, no. But yeah, yeah. I was you... saying that the way that the words are used, that is akin and that needs to no, 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 also 100%. be taken into consideration when looking at the, so the what usage was the, as well. What was the fourth thing you said? So the third thing was consensus. What was the fourth thing? Uh, analogical deduction. That one. So using that one with this thing that you told but me about. It, but the it seal. comes in hierarchy though. Yeah, I understand that, but I'm just saying because logical deduction, when you're just using the Quran, no, ana analogical only, deduction. Analogical. Yeah. What's analogical? So it happened the time of the Prophet peace be upon him. Uh, a, a fly falls into your food. The Prophet peace be upon him says, um, one wing contains poison, one wing con uh, contains this antidote. So therefore, dip it completely in. So both of them, yeah, neutralizes, and then. You know, that's fine. So today, obviously, we're not all living in the desert. There's other creatures that fall in. So scholars will then use analogical deduction and say, okay, what other insects follow that similar pattern to that fly as well? And they will take an analogy okay, and say, so okay. More analogy than logic. <coughs> well, they both. Oh. Can you do one without the other? Uh, I don't know, that's a good question. I have to think about that one. Yeah. But the point I was going to make was that the seal because the seal thing I think is really important. Um, the seal thing you said is either a noun or a verb. That's so not what I said. That I'm reiterating because obviously it's been recorded. It's not to do with noun or verb. I gave an example. No, 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 no. One is one is sealing something. And one one is a seal. seal. Yeah. And I said one is like a verb. One is like a noun. Yeah. I'm not going into that with regards to this passage of the Quran. Oh no, I wanted to go into that passage. Yeah. That's why. That's so why. So then I'm we need to go I, into. I, I want to know is that word that they use a noun or a verb? Because I think that's important distinction to understand if the interpretation has been maybe misunderstood not necessarily because the noun or the verb is not necessarily going to change the meaning over here uh, in in this position i think it would because Be i could i could agree okay, let me that. give you an example yeah. the way because what we're doing is we we're using the english parameters and we're applying it on the arabic language mm. so pertaining this verse the only way we can accurately you know break it down is by analyzing sarf, nahwa, and that's Arabic. Yeah, that's morphology and lexicology, okay. and that's Arabic, and that's of my remit. Okay. That's why I'm not. Uh, th th that, that goes on to another point, but Do I'm not going to make it, otherwise, the conversation is going on yeah. forever. But. So, le lexicology, morphology, and that sort of stuff. But at the, at the very simple nature, it's anytime we want to understand the Quran, we look at Arabic. Yeah, and then if there's a bit of confusion, then the, we look at the Quran. The Quran does does the seed of certain words, so we look at um, explanation. Yeah, so if you don't know, okay, what does this word mean? Look at the re uh, in, in the Quran. How has that word been used elsewhere? And then we can understand, you know, where it is. Then we look towards the explanation given by the Prophet. Then we look at the explanation given by the companions. So there's a hierarchy of stuff. It's not as simple as Oh, it's a noun or it's a verb because nouns and verbs in the Arabic language have d have a different weighting than they do in English. I merely gave you an example of how the word seal can have in, in the English language. It can be used in two different no, ways. No, I understand, but unfortunately, but, you yeah, also yeah. kind of back my point up, which is that it could have possibly meant that he is the last prophet of Islam. But it's turned into he's the last prophet ever. But we already because, discussed that, though, isn't it? No, no, but that's what I'm saying. Yeah. For me, because that's my biggest point with Islam. There's, I, there's I, nothing I other than Islam, though. That's the thing. No, no. Islam means submission. So I agree there should be nothing other than submission to God. Submish, submitting your will to God as per, uh, and following the prophet yeah, but of the time. Not following him as in doing exactly what he did, but following him as in he had a righteous life. So you have to be righteous. That is where I would see this way. Yeah. I think wording is important and understanding is important yeah. because I've seen people do street dawa. That's the right word, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. They've done preaching on the street and they've converted someone in two minutes. How is this person that have only just heard about Islam, who's only just heard about Arabic, suddenly a Muslim, someone who submitted the will to God? How do you know? Without that? doing the history, because you just said that. <laughs> Arabic. Now, how do you know that it, it, it's only taken two minutes? I'll give you an example. I've spoken to some people, they've taken Shahada very quickly. Yeah. But upon asking them, they say, most of my life I've spent with Muslims. Yeah, yeah. Most of my life I've spent in a Muslim country. So I've, I've learned stuff. 
But like you just said, Arabic is a very complex language and you have to look at four or five different things in order to understand the translation of one word. In order for Not someone who doesn't speak Arabic to take their Shahada without doing years and years of study first, because I think that becoming Muslim is a good thing in the sense that you submit your will to God and you work the righteous path. I, I agree with that 100%. But when some people are just trying to convert people and get numbers rather than quality, I think that there's a disconnect there where you're not actually getting someone to become a Muslim you'll be getting them to just believe in this identity and they and they're just doing identity stuff then it's not actual submission so well, I think that, there's a really well I mean that you're, you're questioning the intentions of two different groups of people here you're currently questioning the intention of the person that's accepted Islam assuming that he's only accepted Islam based on two minutes worth of research yes and you're questioning the intention of the person that's giving dawah that he's only doing it to rack up numbers yes so I mean that's that's a very far-fetched to be honest and really I mean you'd have to evidence that Bro, I, I, even the Quran dives into that no no I'm sure he says yeah uh, the Quran says a lot of things that people still do but the point is that like I see people going oh do you know what Islam's the fastest growing religion yeah it's this it's that and they're using it as a tactic to get more com converts or reverts because you guys call it reverts this is why I say it's not about numbers like, half these conversations here is like oh do you believe in God do you believe this do you believe that oh you're Muslim you might as well just say your shahada become one of us you get the brotherhood we'll back you up and which is true by the way <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure it is it's a good thing brotherhood is great it is fantastic <laughs> Especially when you, like you said, keeping each other sharp and trying to learn as much as you can is great for that. But I just believe that in order to really truly submit your will to God, you have to do more than just five minutes of research and just know a few Muslims. Because I've known Muslims all my life and most of them aren't actual Muslims as in some What's, what's your name? Daman. Daman. Yeah. The man. So, the man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Daman. Okay, Daman. So the the thing is, everybody's got a different. Um, Come on, Zisha. Uh, Remember your name. <laughs> yeah. The, the man, yeah. <laughs> sorry, sorry, the, you know, the you, different people have a different barometer of evidence. Mm. Yeah, and different people, and, and that's the thing with Dawah as well. <clears throat> Some people, they they already believe in God. They actually, for them, like I met certain people. They said, bro, it doesn't really matter how many evidences you give. It depends on how I feel. Yeah. Now, whether you agree with that, whether you disagree with that, whether there's quality, whether there's no quality, different people require different forms of evidence. So some people, bro, they literally have one obstacle that's preventing them from believing in a God. Some people, being in a Judeo-Christian society, they believe that, you know what, God is like this, or he's like man, he's this. But having the option that, you know what, God is not a man. God is independent of, you know, Creation. Yeah, it, it, creation and the likes and you know what textual criticism is a thing etc. You don't need to speak to them for very long. For them that will be enough. However for some people they've been traumatized because certain religious figures have acted in a certain way. Yeah, for, for certain people they've been around non-practicing folk and they need you know rationalization why were they work? everyone's got an individual yeah. case so that person that's come with two minutes that's why i'm saying i've spoken to these people and they say you know what i've been around muslims and you know what i just didn't know this particular thing or i didn't want to take my shahada because you know uh, i don't want my parents to find out i said bro you can take it in secret your parents don't necessarily have to find out he's like oh i didn't know that is that is that allowed i said yeah of course it's allowed here we just have two witnesses we do it off camera boom it's done yeah, and then it, it's a map. Why do you need two witnesses? Because there's, there's many wisdoms and, you know, many uh, reasons, but the ones that come to my head at this current moment in time is, let's just say the person passes away. <clears throat> in a non-Muslim society, uh, burial. Like, there's been cases where certain people have argued this person's not even a Muslim. Okay. And then you need witnesses. In Islam, the presence of witnesses is, is brought forward to present an argument, to prove to produce evidence pertaining a certain thing. Okay. Oh, you've, seen, burial yeah, you, you, you've seen the moon? Okay, well who else has seen the moon? Do you have any witnesses? Yeah, I've got this many witnesses. Or oh, this happened with regards to this particular thing. Okay, are there any witnesses? So it's a form of evidence to back up no, the know, veracity of that particular me, point. It was just a bit surprising because I thought when you're doing your shahada, God knows what's going on in your heart. So that's He does, what, and that's why certain people I take... I understand yeah. where you're coming from yeah, with yeah. the burial stuff. Yeah, because there's, when it comes to
to burial and even when it comes to certain things uh, even when you're in an Islamic state there's different rules for say a Muslim than a non-Muslim a Muslim will be held to a higher standard than say a non-Muslim yeah, that's fine. That, was yeah. A, that was a side point I was just yeah, wondering yeah, that's, about that's fine. But carry on. what was the point that we were saying before uh, you were saying that there's different uh, levels of people where they've got different experiences yeah exactly bro so that's that's what it is like your thing it is gonna be different like uh, obviously if we off camera maybe we sat down uh, you've s spoken to certain people and maybe they've given you an, an inadequate answer or an inadequate philosophy like you're saying that well, you're claiming monotheism but you're worshipping the prophet how do you square that circle? No, uh, not worshipping, it was more idolising so Idol, yeah, which is a form of worship yeah, yeah. yeah in this in this regard so, yeah. so that's, that's the way it is that different people will come with a, a different kind of issue or knot that needs to be untied you, uh, I can speak to somebody about philosophical reasoning and that person that, uh, fr frankly, I'm not interested in that. Why do bad things happen to me? I, like one of my friends, he said that he, his, his, uh, he lost uh, his daughter, miscarriage. Mm -hmm. And he said, then he lost another daughter and that was enough for him. He was like, look, I, I have to like, now regroup now. Like, w w why is this happening? Well, what's the point of all this and he started looking into the other religions and he started looking for him it was the problem of evil yeah and which religion has the best answer for that and which is the most convincing he found it to be Islam and then he said you know Alhamdulillah I've made Alhamdulillah means all praise be to Allah made the right decision and that was enough for him because for him bro the, the evidences and this and that he says I just look around that's enough for me to believe in a God like it's not really difficult he says, when I look at the complexity believing, and the design... The believing in God isn't yeah. an issue for me because I think that's no, common but that's, sense. No, but, but that's what I'm saying. Once you thinking, you, you find that... But, but that's what I'm saying, that when you believe in God and then you say that, okay, you believe in a God, now which of the books would be the most authentic? There needs to be a certain criteria. Preservation, yeah? Maybe numerical miracles, maybe prophecies. So there are certain criteria to determine which book is from God yeah and once you've determined which book is from God bro and because that's that's where the disjunct is that I've noticed with you that there's not you're not really convinced that the Quran is from God no, and I, I, no, I think it's from God but I just don't think like I said for me the issue isn't the uh, Quran I think that we should use the Quran as the as the uh, measuring stick which is important my issue is with everything else with the whole sometimes do you believe every single word of the quran is from god i've not read the entire quran no do you believe it is because you said you believe it's from god so this is what i was about to say so i believe it is the word of the god the word of god but the way it's being translated or the way it's being interpreted i think is can be an issue so some people like i said may have said uh, Muhammad is the seal of God meaning that he's a prophet seal of the messages and yeah. another one would read it and go no that means that he's the last prophet mm. as in that's God sealing it up so for me that's yeah. where the line is a bit blurry that's why I have these conversations because I want to yeah. try and get a more definitive answer of why you believe he's the last ever prophet not just it is because it says it is because I think I said that to you last time that was one of my issues with the Sikh religion yeah when I questioned it people were like oh no you believe it because that's what it says yeah I want to know why does it say what it says so I believe it's the truth but the way mankind is the way mankind always sees what they want to see I think that there's a, a chance of a disconnect from the truth because for example look at uh, Jesus then, well, then one second, sorry. So just to make this point, because this is the, the main part of your argument, isn't it? I, I don't want to detract from yeah. it so soon. So your issue, correct me if I'm wrong, is pertaining the seal of the prophets. So then that's the next time we have a discussion, that's where it needs to start from. The seal of the prophet. Yeah, yeah. so the verse of the Quran pertaining yeah. the seal yeah, of the if prophet. We, if, if, I, if I'm lucky enough to meet you again, yeah, that would be great. <coughs> because that's, that's your main thing, that's your main contention, yeah, 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 isn't it? Yeah, yeah khalas, because that's, like I said, for me, uh, the, the Sikh religion, I think, makes a lot of sense as well. Uh, but to pick one over the other, I'm not going to because I think from God. Uh, so my point was just going to be this. Yes, because uh, you said earlier about um, people who finally decide, oh, I do want to worship God. Which book do I follow? My answer is that Jesus didn't follow a book. He was given revelations and stuff like that and he was able to find the truth. He didn't have a book. And he was then able to teach the prof. Uh, the, what was his? What are the people who called him? 
uh, disciples. He was able to teach his disciples things and get them to the next level. And they were able to go out and do miracles. And they didn't have a book. So the idea of that you have to have a book is kind of lost on me because I don't think you need to have a book. It's important to have the truth, but you don't need to have Jesus a book. Jesus did have a book. He was, he was given book? the Injil. What's the Injil? The Injil was a revelation was revealed to Jesus. Well, uh, they call it the Bible nowadays, but that's... The I mean, Bible the, nowadays is... Uh, it's what, Matthew, Mark? Statements. Yeah. Those what? are witness statements by Matthew, Mark, Yeah. whatever. So those aren't the actual words that were given to Jesus. Those are the words exactly. that he may have said <coughs> but they with, wrote down. <coughs> but we know for a fact that Injil was revealed to Jesus. Yeah, so... <coughs> a book was revealed to Jesus. Yeah, but it wasn't a book. It was knowledge that was then turned into a book. Yeah, potential book. Yeah, so... <laughs> Those people didn't have that book at the time. They just asked they did. questions. <clears throat> they did. They would become... So they did. Because then the precepts were taken from the book, isn't it? We. It's, it's like when Allah says, we reveal the Injil to Jesus. How else other... So they had Jesus, they had the Injil as well. Mm. <clears throat> it's the same even with the Muslims as well. We had the Prophet, peace upon him, we had the Quran as well. The Prophet showed us the Quran. It's the same with the Prophets. They showed their respective books to their people as well. Yeah, through so, implementation. Right, that was, that was so the book was needed. The, it wasn't a physical book, it was the knowledge. The Injil would have been a knowledge, the Quran was knowledge. And this is why it wasn't a book that they just handed. It was something that he had to recite and other people remembered. The books were compiled. They were actual books. Well, God gave a book to... No, they were revealed and then they were compiled yeah. in book form. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So yeah. it was knowledge that was given to them, which was then compiled into books. Yeah. So the Injil would have been, because it's the Bible, would have been witness statements of what Jesus said, of his knowledge that the Injil... No, the, the Injil were words of God revealed to Jesus. Mm. That's what they were. Later on, they have become witness statements, etc, etc, and, you know, let's add this bit in. I call them a hadith, but <laughs> I don't think it's like that. Not necessarily, because hadith have chains of narration. They don't have chains of narration, bro. Just the, okay, it's just the chains of narration. In fact, thing. even John, they don't know which John it is. Okay, no, no, but the fact is that you can, they're finding, uh, yeah, we've been going on a while. Do you want to move on to someone else? We, we can do, yeah. Maybe next time we yeah, can have yeah, a yeah, we'll proper conversation. Yeah? Or if I do find you online properly, We'll do a uh, Zoom thing or a Skype thing, or I don't know. What, what, you what just do come to speakers corner, it's easier, isn't it? Well, I just thought because you were stretching your legs a little bit, no, I don't no, want to keep you. Because no, okay. I could talk for days about this stuff. No problem, no problem. But it's really it's good. Always a pleasure, I appreciate you demand. spending this time with no, me. No, my and pleasure, bro. Your film on me. No, I mean, it's it's questions that do need and answers. This man, he's been waiting for ages. Ah, he's been waiting for ages. How are you, brother? No, 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 of course not. Of course not. How are you, Habib? Of course. You could take that then. I don't, yeah. Muslim? Alhamdulillah. Well, this will be an easier conversation. Yeah. Okay, buddy. So Thanks again, man. I've got a question. Do you sure you want it on camera? Yeah, that's okay. Okay. That's okay. Maybe it'll benefit. Yeah, it's Muslim. Yeah. Maybe it'll benefit me. You uh, can take it. Oh well, yeah. So my question is as follows. I be recently became a revert. Bear, bear in mind, I'm not a scholar. So it, I know, yeah, yeah. I know. I'm just asking for some advice. Sure, sure. Recently became a revert, and difficulties came with that, especially from my family side. My family is very. They're not religious. They're not. You know, we we are what we call Druze. Have you heard of this religion? The Druze, no. Yeah. So even I don't know much about it. I was never convinced with it. But 